A profile toolpath basically machines a longer line or a curve. They are typically used to cut parts out. They can be set to machine outside, along or inside the selected line or curve. In this example, I have three rectangles which are all different colours. The first one that I'm going to machine is the inside one. The first thing to do is to open up all of the toolpath options. This is done by selecting toolpaths under the project tree on the right hand side of the screen. This will then show all of the toolpath options directly underneath the splitter bar. The section we're going to be concentrating on at first is the 2D toolpaths area and the first icon in the list is the profile toolpath. To use the profile toolpath the vector that you want to machine will need to be selected when the toolpath is calculated. At the top of the profile dialog there is a drop down which allows you to select along, inside or outside. This sets whether the tool cuts along the profile or on the inside or outside of it. For this first rectangle I'm going to select inside. Next to this option on the right it will by default say selected vectors. So this means that it's going to machine whatever vectors that I select. You can add a final pass thickness which will leave the amount you specify on the bottom for the final cut. Final pass allowance allows you to add or remove extra material from the edge. Next let's specify the depth of the cuts. The most common would be to enter a finished depth. This is how deep you want to machine. It will always be a positive figure. For this example I'm entering 12mm finished depth. Under the profiling tool select the area that says click to select and this will open up the tool database which is basically a catalogue of the tools that are available. I'm going to expand the metric tools, wood or plastic and then the roughing and 2D finishing. Finally I'm going to select a 12mm end mill to cut the part. I'm then going to select to define the material that I am using at the bottom of the dialog. This will open up the material setup dialog where you can enter a thickness of the material that you are using and also set up the zero in the Z axis, whether this is at the top of the material or the bottom of the material, depending upon your CNC machine. Finally, select calculate now and carve code will generate a toolpath on the inside of the rectangle to a depth of 12 millimeters. I personally like to rotate the view around so that I can see the depth of the toolpath which is in red. You'll also notice that there is a grey line. This is a 2D preview of the toolpath. The toolpath previews can be toggled on or off by selecting the light bulbs next to the toolpaths in the project tree. The left light bulb toggles the grey 2D preview and the right light bulb toggles the 3D preview. You may also notice blue and light blue lines. These are rapid and plunge moves that the CNC will make when cutting the part. To see the profile toolpath expand the toolpath section in the project tree. From here select the profile to give options under the splitter bar or right click to get the same options. I'm going to select simulate toolpath to give a quick simulation of how this toolpath is going to look prior to machining it for real. This gives a grey simulation and will toggle the vectors off. To turn them back on select toggle vector visibility. I can also rename the toolpath 
by right clicking on it. I'm now going to create another profile toolpath. This time it's going to be along the line. The first thing to point out is that the finish depth is automatically set to 12 millimeters. Carveco is assuming that I want to cut through the material, but I don't want to do that. So I'm going to enter a depth of one millimeter as I want this to be a groove rather than a cutout. For this, I'm going to use a three millimeter ball nose tool, which has a radius and will give me a nice rounded groove. I can then calculate it and the toolpath will be generated along the rectangle. You'll also notice that another profile has been created in the project tree, which I can right click and simulate to show the groove. For the outside, I can create another profile toolpath. Obviously, this one's set to outside and automatically go into a depth of 12 millimeters. I'm selecting a 12 millimeter end mill to machine this and finally calculate the toolpath. Again, right click and rename to outside, then simulate the toolpath. There are even more options in the profile options. For instance, you can add a move on the CNC which goes into the cut and then out of the cut at a specific angle and distance. These are known as lead in and out moves and reduce issues when plunging on the start point of a toolpath. For instance, to avoid chipping when cutting laminates. This can also be set to a circular arc so the tool gradually cuts into the profile. Ramping moves can also be added. These moves affect how the tool plunges into the material. This by default is set as a zigzag motion, but can also be set to spiral down or make a smooth transition down to the depth of cut. Ramping reduces wear on the tool and also heat generated from plunging straight into the material. For instance, when machining wood, the plunge could burn the material. Ramping will stop this from occurring. Bridges can also be added to the profile. Bridges or tabs as they're also known, keep the part that is being cut secured to the material. Obviously, this is useful if the part being cut does not have any support and prevents it moving, causing damage not only to the parts but also to the tool. These can then be filed or sanded off afterwards. Finally, you can also select layers to machine rather than selecting the vectors. This is great if you have lots of vectors and saves having to select them all, providing they are all on different layers. Here you can see that I have selected the layer to be machined rather than a selected vector.